Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're going to look at a piece of WebAssembly from the derailed box from Hack the Box. Um, but specifically, we're just going to look at how in uh, I can use the Chromium debug tools to step through the JavaScript to see exactly how the WebAssembly is called, um, look at the pointers in memory to see the strings that are there that are being passed into this WebAssembly function, and then eventually jump into the WebAssembly and step through this kind of uh, popping and pushing stack-based language, debugging it uh, line by line uh, until we see a string copy that's unsafe and sort of can un figure out there's a vulnerability there. So um, even if you haven't done derailed, it still might be an interesting way to look at WebAssembly. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's take a look at this application. Um, we've got this ClipNotes application. I've already log created a user and logged in. Um, I can create a ClipNote, um, you know, like this. please subscribe and create a clip note here and we will view it just fine. You can see the author is OXDF, uh, it was created on such and such date. Um, what we wanna look at and what we found, you know, there's details of this in the full blog post for solving this box. But um, if we go to sources, uh, page 113, the, the page we're on, in that page, we have some JavaScript down here that is going to get the clip notes uh, raw and then it's going to call load clip note and it's going to pass it. Let's see. Um, it's going to basically get this window. It's going to create the editor, which is this thing down here. Um, it's going to, but then it's also going to get the author and the created and it's going to pass it to this module CC call. And CC call is C calling a C function from JavaScript. So we've got a breakpoint right here and refresh the page. We'll see that it actually runs at this point. The note content and the editor are actually already put into the page, um, but the metadata stuff is not here yet and because that's what's going to happen in the C code. Um, so this CC call is calling, it's specifically it's a helper function, but it's going to call the display function. It's going to say, hey, I need to find this WebAssembly. I want to call the display function. Uh, it's going to return a number. It's going to take two strings, and those two strings are created and author. Um, in fact, um, well, yeah, so we can step into this. And we can start, to, now we're in the CC call, um, or C call, and we can come down here and really there's a bunch of stuff here that's formatting things, et cetera. Um, but right here in line 774, we have this func.apply and it's passing in C args. If we run to that, um, we can come down here and see like C args is now uh, these two different integers, right? Two pointers. And um, we can use the UTF to, oops, not, to string on, I'll just, just so I don't have to type out um, type out those numbers, I can do C args zero, and we get back the date string. And likewise, I can do the first one is my author string. So um, those addresses are those are pointing to those strings. And so we'll pass that in. We can also look, look what is func? If we just type func, um, it shows us part of the function, but then it cuts off. Um, if we, uh, we can this is actually like a dynamically generated thing. Let's see, it comes from up here from git c func identify. You know, so we're passing in display here to get a func that's going to call display. Um, and so we can do uh, console.log uh, func.2 to string like that. And that'll show us the full thing. Um, and we, I can move this up here a little bit. Um, but also, we can also just step into it, which is what we're going to do. Um, so we'll step in here, a little bigger than that. Um, and now uh, we have a bit, this is basically finding the WebAssembly in memory and right here on 1599, it's going to call it. Um, so we'll come down here and again, we can see um, if we look at like arguments, it's our, we've got the, uh, the two parameters we're passing in and uh, we can step into that. And now we've actually entered into WebAssembly. Um, so if we look up here a little bit, we can see this is uh, on OX1BB. We've got function number two being called. It's exported under the name display. So that's how we called it. We got in here by display. Um, it takes two parameters, uh, var0 and var1, and it returns an integer as well. And let's see. It then defines a bunch of variables, so 39 variables here. Um, and then this is where the code actually starts on OX1BE. Um, WebAssembly is very stack based. Um, you can see over here we have, uh, let's see, this, yeah, here we go. Um, the stack, which is now currently sitting empty. Um, we can also see our variables. So var0 is the first thing passed in, var1 here. 
um, we can do the same UTF uh, to string on 5244064, and we can get back that string. So we can pass in these addresses just like we did before. Um, and see, if we, the global is also defined down here. We can scroll down, and here's uh, no, not global. So there's mo under module. Um, there's some globals, and so that's where these are defined. Um, I don't know for sure exactly what global zero is. It feels to me like it's some kind of memory buffer that it's kind of like using the way, kind of the way a C program uses a stack, um, not to be confused with the stack up here that I was talking about for WebAssembly, um, but like an actual like stack in memory. So I guess it's like a memory buffer we're using. Um, so we can, so the way, the way this all works is um, we have global.get and then we global zero is gonna get the value from global zero and put it on the stack. So we can step over it um, by running this. And you can see now this value that was in global zero is now on the stack. Um, it seems like it's actually the same value as the uh, end of my sec my last value, um, my last variable passed in. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but we've got global zero, we put it on the stack. Now we're gonna local.set var2, and so var it's gonna take the value off the stack and set it into var2. Um, now I want one thing to note, well, so we can see that that's what happened. One thing to note is I'm always using the step into. Um, if you use the step over in Chrome, it is going to uh, crash and, uh, not crash, it's going to take you out of the function to the next um, piece of JavaScript. And that is not what you want. And you have to do a bunch of steps to get back here. I've made this mistake a thousand times. I hopefully won't make it in this video, but you really want to avoid this once you're in the WebAssembly. Um, the other thing I forgot to say earlier, I'm going to say now, um, I need to be doing this in Chromium. I couldn't figure out how to make Firefox work right. So I um, am working out of Chromium here. and It's working very nicely for me, other than these weird idiosyncrasies. So back to here, um, I32 constants. So we're just going to create this constant, put it on the stack. Um, you can see it shows up here. Then we set that to var3, um, goes here. Uh, we got var2, which we're then going to get, which is now our um, thing, our global zero value. Um, we're going to get var3. So now we have these two values on the stack. And the next thing we're going to do is call I32 sub. So it's going to subtract 128 from 5244032. And you can see the result comes up here right exactly where, you know, what we'd expect. Um, just 04. So this value is 128 less than, this value is 128 less than this value. So that, that, that is right. Um, and we can actually send the results on the stack. So we save that into var4. Um, we, in fact, then get it right back onto the stack and set it into global zero. So now we've, oh, we've changed that global zero value. Again, I think this might be some sort of like, now we have like the, the global zero might be the bottom of our stack or something, but it, it's not super important other than just to say, we kind of have a feel for how the web assembly is working. Um, we can get some more variables here. So here we get um, this var zero onto the stack as well as our pointer to the first variable passed in, which was the um, date string. And we're gonna store that 124 bytes into that. Um, so we can do that. I didn't actually have good success finding that. I think that stores that memory address there. Um, same thing, we're then gonna do the first variable 120 bytes in. So this, I think I think we're still in kind of the preamble of the WebAssembly where we're setting up the function, we're putting the uh, passed in arguments into memory. Now we hit this 80. Um, I think this stuff is all actually kind of interesting and I'm not gonna put too, spend too much time on it other than to say um, we get back, we set var five as 80, we eventually get var four, which is our I'm just going to keep saying stack pointer, but I'm not really, really sure what it is. And we're going to add them together here. So we're going 80 bytes down this from this pointer. Um, we're going to do some more things here that end up loading. What's really, what I'm really going to do is skip forward to this function call and see, okay, so we have, we're calling this function with two parameters. The first one is uh, 80 bytes down from this new value um, that I've generated here, this, um, this, which is this 3984. And the other one is, and when I say down, I guess I mean higher. Um, and the other one is the pointer to our initial value. So if we look right now, we, we already know uh, 64 here is the date string. If we look at, uh, let's see, 3984, um, there's, not, there's no string there. If we call this function, and I can't step over it, so I can just step in and step back out, um, we can now look at it and that date string is there. So that effectively is a string copy. We've done a string copy. Um, we could go through and debug Funk 4, but we can kind of just tell right there, oh, this copied the string from one buffer to another. Um, now this drop just basically says, clear the stack for me. So the return value was the address of the, the address. We don't need it. Um, now we get the variable 32 and we do roughly the same thing from the same. So now instead of going 
uh, 80 bytes higher in value or lower on the stack, um, we're going 32 bytes, um, which if you've solved derailed, you'll recognize like 80 and 32, that's 48 bytes apart. That is the distance to the overflow. So um, we've done the same kind of thing here now where we've got, uh, this time we're calling uh, 3936. So that's, we were at 3984 for the first one. Now we're copying the second variable into 3936. And so we can do the same kind of thing here. Uh, put a 36 here, it's empty. If we step in, step out, and now we've copied my username. So you can see right there, this has, right, right there, we, we can say, oh, if I wasn't sure that there might be an overflow before, I definitely want to check it now because I've got seen this copy um, to some place on the, to some place in a buffer in memory. And then I've seen myself 48 bytes earlier in memory, um, copy the next thing in, which means that if that overflowed, it could easily go into the next one. And that's, that's worth looking at and that's what we found. So I'm not going to actually spend time digging into this entire uh, function here. It does a lot of things that I don't um, totally understand. You can see if we like hit this to step out, you can see, boom, as soon as we do, we've got the uh, metadata and stuff loaded on the page. So it, it clearly does that. I guess we could, you could also step through and watch the points to see if it showed up on the page. And that might be somewhat interesting, but um, at this point, I think we found kind of the main thing we're looking for. Um, I had really hoped, uh, I have a hacky Easter video where I use a Ghidra plugin to turn WebAssembly into um, C-like code that can be loaded in Ghidra and it gives you the disassembly of it. And it worked really well there. It didn't work on this one and it crashed. I was pretty disappointed. I thought that would be a really neat thing to show. Um, so I'll probably, once this box retired, I'll probably create an issue over there on their GitHub and see if any chance they want to try to figure out what's wrong and try to fix it because that would be cool to have, um, but it didn't work here. So um, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I uh, will talk to you next time.